In this video, I gathered 50 of my best tips and tricks for the finals and put them all into this one video for you. We'll go over everything from how you can double your FPS, new movement techs, and even how to get better at the finals overall. So without wasting any time, did you know that if you wait to put the vault into a cash out while a team is respawning, it will actually force them to spawn further away from the cash out. This can be super helpful, especially for the final round as there's only two teams and you can force your opponents to have to walk across the map. If you slide into a jump pad, you'll gain more momentum and go further. Pair this with angling your jump pad on roofs and other surfaces to traverse the map as fast as possible. Take this a step further by throwing some goo down and angling your pad on that, ensuring you always have an angled pad to cover more distance. For my heavy mains, you don't have as much movement potential sadly, but if you're using the goo gun, you can build a goo tower or bridge to help keep up with the other class's movement abilities. It is a bit slow, but it's better than nothing sometimes. The light class has a lot of movement options, but you can take the grapple to the next level by putting a motion sensor on a red canister, throwing it, and then grappling onto it right away. This will let you fly around with the barrel, but your grapple will end once the canister explodes. If you want to win by any means necessary, then consider playing heavy with the C4. Attach the C4 to any throwable item, but preferably one of the explosive barrels to instantly kill your opponents. This is by far the most broken and easy way of getting kills right now, so be sure to use it before it possibly gets fixed. Most of you probably know that you can push these buttons to move bridges and other objects around the map, but did you know you can actually shoot these buttons to activate them as well? This can be super helpful for making a quick escape on a bridge or putting up a barricade as you're running away. Grenades are so useful in the finals, but most people don't realize that you can actually underhand them as well to shorten your range. All you need to do is right click instead of left click. This is perfect for dropping nades below you or at your feet as you run away from a player. This trick works with pretty much all throwables, including the heavy's dome shield. A lot of heavy players will left click to throw the dome shield, but this can cause it to have too much momentum and bounce far away from where you actually wanted it to go. So instead, just right click and look down a little to have it drop at your feet. If you're ever in the knockout zone and just need a little extra cash to reach second place, remember that tapping the vaults gives you $1,000, and if you put the vault into a cash out, you'll get an additional $2,000. Every kill is also worth $200, so it's normally not worth it to purely go for kills unless deathmatch is enabled, which will increase the amount you get for kills. If you team wipe in ranked, you'll lose 30% of your team's total cash, which is another reason why purely going for kills can be a little risky. Try to tap vaults and stay alive to ensure that you don't get put in the knockout zone. For those of you lucky enough to have a 4090, be sure to turn on DLSS frame generation. Unfortunately, if you don't have a 4090, this setting won't be available to you, but if you have it, you can easily double your FPS with this setting alone. While we're in the settings, be sure to turn your FOV up as the lower it is, the less information you'll be able to take in, which will hurt your gameplay a lot. You also feel like you're moving faster with a higher FOV, so I highly recommend playing on 90 to 100 FOV. You're also going to want to turn off motion blur as this is going to hurt your visibility in game while offering no real benefits. The same goes for lens distortion. This will add subtle refractions at the edges of your screen and some chromatic aberration which all hurts your visibility. Your quality settings, be sure to set your view distance to epic, that way you can see as much as possible. Be sure to turn down the other settings though as you don't want your FPS to be really low. I like to run everything on low with view distance as the only thing turned up. In the gameplay settings, be sure to turn on use enemy team colors, that way each enemy player you look at will be highlighted with the color corresponding with their team. This will help you from getting confused at which team you're fighting. You can also change your crosshair in the gameplay settings, everything from the width to the color and opacity. If you've ever tried to defib your teammate while in a bush, you may have realized that it doesn't work, and that's because if there's anything even slightly blocking your teammate's statue, the defib will not connect. So simply pick up their statue with the F key and drop them in an open spot to revive them. There are a few cannons around the map that you can interact with, and when you do, they'll actually launch a cannon that is capable of destroying structures. The gas can be really annoying, but did you know that fire from pyro nades or yellow barrels actually gets rid of it? Smoke grenades and canisters also get rid of fire, so be sure to remember this next time your teammate accidentally sets off all those mines. Speaking of smoke grenades, did you know that you can actually see through smoke using the light class's thermal vision? I think the thermal vision is pretty pretty underrated and paired with the smoke grenades, you can actually make some pretty cool plays. If you're ever running the cloak on light, consider taking the vanishing bomb as well. It may seem a little bit redundant, but the vanishing bomb actually stops the cloak's use timer. So if you use the two gadgets properly, you can basically have your invisibility up at all times. There's also a distinct sound for when you use both the cloak and the vanishing bomb, so be sure to keep an ear out for this sound. Time to 
chances are that if you hear this, you've got a light player about to flank you. If you're playing ranked, I have a tip for you to get extra elo from each of your games. Most people don't realize this, but if you're first in the knockout rounds, you get an extra 25 elo. This doesn't sound like much, but if you place first every round, it can really add up. If you're ever wondering if you could pick up an item or not, just look for the blue glow. This glow means you're able to pick up this item. And if you crouch, you can actually extend the reach of your grab, allowing you to pick up these items from a further distance, which can be really helpful sometimes. You can destroy ladders and zip lines by simply shooting or meleeing them. This can be extremely useful if you're defending a cash out on an elevated structure. Just remember that if you fall, you need to have a medium with either a jump pad or a zip line to get back up. If you place jump pads, mines, or anything else, you can immediately pick them up, which will reset the use timer and allow you to use that item again. This can be really helpful if you misplace any of your gadgets. If you hear this sound, that means a team has just been wiped. You can also tell if a team has been wiped by just looking at their statues. When a player dies, they drop a statue that their teammates can interact with to revive them. But if a team wipes, their statues will disappear. If you can't check for their statues, however, you could also just hold tab. There will be a skull by each player's name to indicate that they are dead. This could be super helpful to check in a chaotic fight involving multiple teams, giving you the info you need to win. Also, be sure to have your announcer volume turned up in the settings as they often give important information such as when a team wipes, respawns, or if there's only one player left on a team. All of this info is very useful and the best part is the announcers just give it to you, so be sure to have their volume turned up. If you're playing medium, it's important to know that when you revive your teammates with the defibrillator, it only brings them back to about half HP so be sure to heal them right away. Fortunately for your teammates, however, there's a two second window after being revived where the player is invincible. This gives you enough time to heal them before they're immediately killed. So this can be super annoying to play against sometimes because you'll spray all your bullets at an invincible target. So be sure to keep this in mind. The heal beam takes a long time to recharge if you let it overheat, but luckily the game tells you its heat level. Simply look at the icon in the middle of the heal gun and when it starts to reach the top, it's time to switch back to your gun for a second. It takes less time for it to cool down that way, first letting it overheat and waiting for that animation to finish. If healing isn't your thing though, remember that you can make different loadouts in the menu. This way you can have a different setup for each character. For instance, one of your mediums can be set as healer and the other as recon. This will give you the freedom to quickly switch roles without constantly editing your primary loadout. I recommend the F car on the medium class, at least if you consistently hit your shots. But if your aim is a bit shaky, the AK is a great second option with a lot more ammo, so it's just a little more forgiving for bad aim. For your gadgets, I'd run jump pad, defibrillator, and grenades, but I'll leave the specialization up to you. On the light class, I like to use either the XP-54 or the double barrel shotgun, but it really depends on your playstyle and what your primary specialization is. For your gadgets, I like to run with the glitch grenades, stun gun, and vanishing bomb, as I believe this gives you the most versatility on the light class, regardless of your specialization. On the heavy, the shotgun is completely busted right now, especially with current animation cancel glitch going around, but if shotguns aren't your thing, the Lewis gun is definitely the next best option for ranked. As for your gadgets, I like to run the Dome Shield, RPG, and C4, as this gives you the absolute best fracking potential, as well as great defense with the Dome Shield. As the Heavy, you can use your RPG and C4 to destroy this bridge on the map Soul, which will force your opponents to funnel through the single green bridge remaining. This makes this cash out by far the easiest to defend and the hardest to attack. If you ever want to level up the battle pass quickly, then remember to check your daily and weekly challenges, that way you're maximizing the amount of XP you can get. The finals is a team game and communication and coordination is really important, so if you're playing without a full 3 stack, consider trying to find some friends to play with, even if they aren't that good. Because at the end of the day, any amount of communication and teamwork is better than nothing, and the game is free, so it really shouldn't be too hard to find two other players to join you. And finally, just remember to have fun, as the developers made this game with you having fun in mind. So if you take things too serious, you'll distract yourself from what the game was really meant for, and that will overall negatively affect your experience. So just remember to have fun, and don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful, consider sharing it with your friends who are just getting into the game, and subscribe with notifications on for more helpful content on the finals.